Welcome to Holy Fuck. Holy Fuck. Holy Fuck. Two gals on the prowl for enlightenment, sex, and all things holy. Holy Fuck. Each week, beauty alchemist and transformational coach and speaker, Catherine McClellan, and spiritual healer and life coach, Krista Kim, discuss navigating spiritual consciousness in a real human body. Stumbling through dating, relationships, and everyday life, all while maintaining a fucking sense of humor. I have nothing on. Yay. (laughs) So to speak. (laughs) She's naked, (laughs) y'all. I have nothing on. Hi okay. everyone, welcome to the <laughs> Holy Fuck Podcast. I love when I catch Catherine like saying something funny because I feel like it's the perfect time to start. I know, so. and I never realized that she's already pushed the button. I don't know why. One of these days I'm going to figure it out. But anyway, Krista, um, yeah, I have Hi. nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're really talking about is jewelry. She likes to wear a lot of baubles and bangles and beautiful things, but they... Uh, I'm always scolding her like, they're making too much noise. We're going to have to get our sound guy on it. Yeah, or I have them on, we don't notice, and then I make them some huge noise, and I am like, ah! So anyway, today I have nothing on. There you go. Well, we could have just let them imagine. We could have, darn it. Well, missed our opportunity for (laughs) enticing an audience into listening (laughs) and envisioning. Envisioning whether they like it or not. We have now implanted this idea in their heads. Yeah. So um, I just want to do a little recap to one of our previous episodes where we were talking about something that we were birthing. Yes. And um, I get, well, Catherine was birthing and I was fathering. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that. And it's taken us a couple of months to get it up and running, but um, we are birthing the two gals Gal soul, soul school, school, y'all. Soul school, y'all. And we're super excited about it. I mean, it kind of, it's funny how spirit works because it kind of came about because. The title, holy fuck, isn't the most advertisable uh, <laughs> if y'all had title on the planet, so it's it was really hard to get the word out with that. So we are still obviously holy fuck, but we have this other entity that we've created in order to build workshops and retreats and be and able spend to- Spend time with you. Yeah, Out spend time with you in public. And actually advertise in public where people <laughs> will put our posters up because they don't say holy fuck all over them. So what they will say is two gals, which is our substitute name for holy, holy fuck, fuck. And then they'll say soul school and you'll see workshops and retreats and things under that title. So yes. we're super excited and yeah, I'm I think it's starting really soon. <laughs> it is. It's starting at the end of this month because we are beginning our first workshop series. And, that's right. Um, that's super We're exciting. super excited. And we are going to have it in person in Ojai, California. And if you can't tell, my Your cat is barking again. <laughs> My cat's throwing up at the idea, which may indeed ha- be how Krista and I feel. <laughs> but we got a hairball in here. We got a pussy with a hairball, okay? <laughs> it's a quite an image. So, yes. Um, all, so we worked here. through the fear, and we impregnated, and we birthed, and it's super exciting. And it just, um, you know, again, the lesson is just little baby steps each, you know, each week, taking steps forward and putting our ideas out into the world. So check us out on check our website. And we hope you'll come to. see what we're up to. And we'll, the, you can find us on the Holy Fuck website. Mm-hmm. And you can find us on Facebook under Two Gals also. And at our other website now, twogalsoulschool.com. So right. Everything. Everything's out there. Place. And also on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, so that's a quickie little advertisement because we want to teach this and have this class where we're going to give you guys experiences and all sorts of great stuff. But we don't want the room to be empty. We want you to come. <laughs> so check so, us out. Check us out. All right. So and today, in other news, in other news, <laughs> what's the other news, Krista? Um, the other news is keeping the love alive. So today, we both, Krista and I, have finally come to the conclusion that what we're both working on in this moment in our lives is no matter what's happening in the relationships that we've chosen around us, Mm -hmm. our best course of action 
is to let go mm. and let the relationship tell us what it is rather than us tell the relationship what it is. Yes. <laughs> and for me specifically, I feel like my relationship with Golden Eyes, I have been trying to convince myself that the and relationship... Him. I'm sorry? And him, maybe. Convince myself and him that the relationship needs to be a certain way. And and then there was a moment where he met me and he was trying to convince me that it could be that way. And True. so we spent December and January and February trying to fit ourselves into the too co- small box. To, like, apparently way too small of a box for us. Um, yeah, the relationship boyfriend, girlfriend, we're doing this life together in monogamy and 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 I still at this point I'm the top of the box has come out, you know, come open. So I don't know Is exactly. Is that Pandora's box? It, it might be. <laughs> it's always bit. Pandora's box with golden eyes and I. <laughs> but um, the letting go part is, is that in the p- past, it's that we would always blow it up. Meaning the right, relationship, destroy something it. would happen. I would say, I'm out, I'm done. And he would, it would make him angry because he's like, why are you done? Just because it's not looking a certain way just remain here and i just could not do it because my mind was like nope i want this 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 and this and to be fair to you Mm -hmm. it's happened both ways i never seen two people hand back and forth their stuff as many (laughs) times as you do it's very interesting to me because she's talking real i'm talking material (laughs) stuff like that picture i'm coming to take it off your wall right now and you know it it, it's funny as we talk about it now, but it's a way that the two of you have of expressing upset mm-hmm. and that you need to take a piece of yourself back. That's what I feel like. It Ooh. was almost like you both were giving too much out. And mm-hmm. so every time it started to get wobbly, you needed to take that back. So it's kind of cool to think about it that way. And before you that. give each other any more stuff <laughs> next time, how about you think about how much you're giving away and if you're giving yourself away with it? I think because that's what's, you know, that's what we were kind of trying to manage is this concept of being all in. And for me and my all of my past relationships, really, it's like, oh, when I'm all in, that means it's like all consuming, all encompassing, we do everything together, and we eat together, think together, sleep together. It's just like, and I was deeming that as like, that's the standard for a good relationship. And it has just kept creating this like chaos and uncomfortability with us. And so this time things have happened and <laughs> <laughs> those were quotation marks. Yeah. Things have and happened. I got, and I'm not saying the only one, but like I got really in the, okay, we're building this life together. Mm. And got in that I generated a lot of expectation. Yeah. And the expectation looks like, well, now that you're mine and dating me, then you need to show up on time and you need to do this and you need to call me this many times a day. And and he actually, I don't even know if he understands this yet, but he actually had expectation back too. And Absolutely. his was much in the, I need you to text me this many times a day and respond and that type of thing. So we were both looking for ways in which to feel really nurtured and comfortable in this new relationship box that we were creating yeah it was like a relationship prison <laughs> I'm let, me sure. out. let me out it was both of you yelling but you're both inside it's like you know <laughs> yeah. very funny the vision of that is like you in one room facing out screaming let me out but you really chose in and locked the door so that's it's a great example Kristen. i appreciate you noticing the expectations that show up when you know he's your boyfriend and we're really turning this out to you guys the audience to think about this like I know I've done this. Have you done this? Do you get into a specific kind of relationship and then keep creating it because, oh, that's what I said I wanted. That's what I'm doing. And maybe it's actually not what's happening. And so for me, moi, I've had a very, very big attachment. Uh, Absolutely within the last month, but definitely Mm -hmm. even for the last year and a half that There is something special in my relationship with Mr. L Mm -hmm. and that, and, and first of all, there is something special in my relationship (laughs) with Mr. L, 
But I don't know what it is because it's not what I think it is. Right. And so what's happened recently is that we got very connected. I got very interested in thinking, oh, here we go. I'm going to see him. It's going to start working. Sexual We're transmutation. Have sexual transmutation. It's all going to work out. It's going to work out the way I want it to work. And I knew, the one thing I knew was I was committed to sexual transmutation, but not as much to Mr. L. Mm. I wanted Mr. L to be the man, but I knew, and I had said to him a number of times, this is actually what I'm doing. Are you with me? Right. And that was helpful because that really cleared it up for me because he didn't have to say yes. But for a while, he was saying yes. And the and then, minute he ha- says yes, what's created? Well, then all of my expectations about yeah. what yes means. Mm-hmm. And of course, we didn't have a lot of conversations since he lives <laughs> elsewhere, which shall remain nameless. And so what <laughs> ended up happening was that into my field came another man. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting it. I didn't see it coming. And then all of the sudden, the other man said, okay, well, I'm actually willing to choose you, Mm -hmm. really choose you. He said, he actually didn't say I'm willing to. He said, I choose you. What are you up to? (laughs) And I'm like, no, 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 no. And I wanted him to choose me, but I didn't want to have to choose away from the, the possibility of what was Mr. L. Because you'd invested a lot of time. I have like, a year yeah. and a half is yeah. a long time. And I care about him. And this is the thing. Where is the story that we have to stop caring about people just because it isn't a specific type right. of relationship? And this was so cool because what's really been up is how do you have a relationship that many miles away? Mm-hmm. You know, 6,000 miles away is a ridiculous try. And yet I was willing to try because I, I'm pretty flexible. I might be able to do all sorts of things. And yet it didn't seem realistic on some level. Mm-hmm. So I can see why while someone would want to want that, you can't really want something that you can't sort out how you're going to get. You right. know, Like if it costs me a million dollars to do something tomorrow, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to pull that off. Sure, there could be a miracle. I could hope for that, but... But so it in, helps you get really clear, though, it does. on what you were wanting. It did. And what I finally really got to was it had to be clear for both people that mm. it was really a priority. And I think what Chris and I really started about we wanted to talk about today was keeping the love alive is this thing that you choose the love no matter what the form of your partnership or relationship is. So... While it's disintegrating from the form, while you're both screaming, get me out of here, you don't have to hate each other. Which, you- yes. And so, like, that's where I kept going with Golden Eyes. It was like every time he wasn't showing up in the way I thought he should show up, I would want to cut the love off. Right. And and the other piece that I want to just say, too, is he wasn't showing up for the relationship the way you thought it should be, but he was showing up with integrity. He was showing up with honesty. He was showing up with, this is what I want to try to do, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't matching. So one of our choices is, oh, we can judge them. We can say, oh, he's this and that and not this and that, blah, blah. Or we can say, wow, he's innocent of these charges I'm trying to (laughs) give him. I had a lot of charges. Yes. But if he's innocent... What if everything he's doing makes sense to him and makes sense to him because it's based in who he is and his values, and I'm judging them somehow as being bad and wrong? How can that be loving? So we'll like take back all that power and you get to say, okay, I'm willing to love you enough to see you as innocent in this situation Mm -hmm. and then find out what relationship is here. Is it a friendship? Is it a friends with benefits? Is it... Is yeah, it even possibly someday down the road something else? But right now it's a this. Well, I think that's where I get really confused because the romantic woman inside of me wants to go, we've chosen each other. Yeah. That's it. Let's like melt into that and go that direction. And every time we've tried that in the past, it's like we just literally melt into each other too much and then we get lost in it. And we can't function, and then we start getting resentful, and then it just it's this thing that builds very quickly between the two of us until we both go, ah, I can't stand you, and we run to our corners. And take all your stuff. And we 
return all the stuff and like, and I'm like, so this means we're done. And, you know, and I start putting the rules in and he's, what I noticed this time is that that's the pattern we do, Mm -hmm. but we had two different meanings behind it. Yeah. So his, my meaning is we're done. If you're returning my stuff, we're done. You're choosing not to be in a monogamous relationship with me. What he was doing, I think, was taking some space. Yeah. So he was saying, we got too too much too quick. We lost ourselves. We, are, we need to step back, analyze what happened, get really clear within ourselves that it's not about the other person. It's about what's happening inside of us. And then see if there's anything that can be brought back together. And so he was actually keeping the love alive yeah, and asking or, or saying it might need to change form. And in him saying it might need to change form, I go, fuck that. I'm out. You don't want me. You don't, I'm done. Right. So I'm like this all or nothing thing. And he's actually staying in his loving. Yeah. And this time... You know, I I think you both have had different opportunities for this, but this time it was really clear. And what was great is you actually accepted the invitation. You were like, oh, I see a different possibility. It hasn't been easy for you. No, it's been brutal. It's been really hard. (laughs) It's been a brutal two weeks of like trying – because it's – I'm trying to change a pattern. And this is what I think these relationship things get so traumatizing and painful feeling is because you're trying to shift a mindset – and it's going against all of your belief systems, all of my belief systems of what I think relationship and love and commitment looks like. He's he's committed to me. He loves me. We're in some type of partnership together, and it looks completely different for me. And it's the painful part is, can I open my heart up even bigger instead of closing, which is my pattern? Can I open up even bigger and expand and hear him? from my loving self, hear his divine self talking to me and not see him as his Rico Suave selves and all the selves in between that and golden eyes. Like, cause that's kind of what was running through my head. It was like all of the things that have happened over the last eight months was running, was trying to run the show in this change. Right. And what, what you're really pointing out, Krista, is that you were being given the choice to come from fear and smallness and holding and tight and and scarcity, like there's not enough love in the world and there's not enough love for me. Mm-hmm. Instead of choosing that, which would create judgment of what he was doing and based on that, you instead decided, I'm going to expand into the loving. I'm going to choose this human being. Mm-hmm. I'm going to love him no matter what his process is. And then I noticed, what I noticed with you guys is it started to make sense to you. You started to go, oh. And so one of the things we really want to point out today while we're talking about this to our listeners is we have wounds that are based in our childhood and these relationship issues trigger them. And Mm -hmm. when Chris and I talk about we do healing work, we do it on ourselves. You can hear us talking about it to each other and with each other. And we do it with our clients. And it's about finding the roots of that. For me last year, there were some deep roots in my dad Mm-hmm. That when he passed, I had six months of full on therapy <laughs> because I found a place way down deep inside me that was from when I was about a year old, where my first heartbreak ever happened. And it was with my dad. And I've been carrying it mm-hmm. all the way through these relationships. And I've been, uh, if I get triggered, I can be so angry about the heartbreak that the person in front of me didn't cause, but it keeps bringing those feelings. And they don't even have a chance at that they point. They don't have a chance. And that's, I think, where Golden Eyes was sitting. It's like my abandonment story that I've been carrying for so long, which I have worked so hard. I mean, my whole, it just, it's like, it's getting to the point where we even said this week, like, I need to get like take it to the next level. And like, I could totally see that this is why this was happening yeah. with Golden Eyes and I. It's like, I've done so much healing around the abandonment and it and that I wasn't really actively feeling it in my day-to-day life or thinking about it. And what it took was this next level of, he's handing my stuff back and leaving when things get tough. And yeah. I, it just blew my circuits. It did. It did. And it was... 
you know, the fact that you guys actually managed to work this one slightly differently and to come back through it. And here's the thing. If really what we're about is love, if really what we're saying is that the ultimate experience of life is to love as much as you can, who says that having a romantic relationship with someone is better Mm. than a deep, solid, soulful friendship? Like, I never want to marry my best friend. I don't. I'm not sexually attracted to her, and I never want to marry her. And she is the deepest, closest human to me after 37 or 9 or something years of friendship. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. If we were – if we had dated, we would not have friendship anymore. You know what I mean? If you just put it in that context just to think about it. We let it change it. I've had a first husband – uh, second husband, those people were romantic partnerships. I've had boyfriends and all sorts of. I was engaged. Blah, blah. It's very rare to stay none friends of those with people yeah. are really in my life. And while yes, some of them, but if I actually made a point of continuing to keep my heart open, loving, and not judge them, I think there could be different. You know, there could be different outcomes. And I know with my first husband. We had a big opening this year, and this huge wave of forgiveness and loving mm-hmm. came back through. It was beautiful. And what I know about Mr. L, whose name I almost <laughs> revealed, <laughs> woo, that was close, because I'm talking about how much I love him, probably, is that I love him. There's nothing to change have to go that. Away. And he said the same thing to me. He's like, the person you're choosing is lucky. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful that you're getting that chance to express that kind of love with him. And I'll always love you. Have a great life and stay in touch. Like, don't let this so go. Amazing. And that's – so think about that, everybody. It's like beyond our ego pain where we're like, fuck him. He don't like me. I don't like you. Like that mm-hmm. whole playground, punch you in the side, rock away, whatever it is. It's an old game. We don't need to play it anymore. We're trying to raise – like some total effect of love on this planet so we can have more people who care for each other every day? How can, in our individual lives, how can we stay in love with people who leave us, who hurt us, who abandon us? Like, can we get so big? I don't know if I can or not. I, I'm going to try. I'm learning about it. I mean, it just feels very, I feel like, when it's a love relationship and there's the sex part involved, it's like that's where part of the wounding feels for me. So mm. it's – he's saying, I love you. I'm here. We're friends. And we've continued to talk this week. So the status is – I don't know what the status <laughs> is. Okay. So that's part of the letting go. We're in love with each other. We're, we don't know what it means in relationship. Right. And we're trying to uh, – not even trying to. We just are friends. Right. We, talk in the morning, we talk during the day, we support each other. And what I noticed for myself yesterday was I found myself having to let go into this place of Mm. if he decides or if I decide that we are no longer going to be sexual partners, then how is that going to shift how I feel about him as a friend? Because like right now, yes, I'm still friendly with him and we're still talking and everything, but there's, I can Feel the element of like hoping that it's going to work out in this relationship way. And part of it ever, if it's ever going to have a chance to do that, what I know is I have to let go of needing <laughs> like, that. So I it's like the, do that. Oh my yeah, God. it's the back. It's like swimming part. forwards and backwards at the same time. And yet it's actually maybe a little more like treading water. It's like biding your time. Take, a, take some space. What I've noticed for both of you is not really treading water is that actually you've both invested in your own lives more this week. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that's when the balance comes in. When the balance comes it in, has. all the emotions come down. We're both two different out. people. It's like you know, our energy bodies. And I don't know if it's because when we get together, the energy is so high that it just like, makes us crazy. And so maybe it is that we can't even be in each other's physical presence. And that's why it was so fun this week because we're just Skyping or FaceTiming or whatever. And it's like, we can still have all of our great conversations, but there's literally not physical intimacy and proximity to get everything confusing. And there's this part of me that's like, 
oh, is he going to use this as why we can't be intimate? Like, look how great our lives are going this week. We both feel powerful again. We're both walking around happy. And so that's the magic button, Krista. We don't well, get to be partners. And maybe I, I could write you guys a prescription for only one night together a week. <laughs> and then we could see how you do. And then you could progress to two. I mean, maybe, I mean, it sounds funny. But, but I seriously, I think maybe that's there's part of that. If you really want to explore this again, mm -hmm. is you see where the balance point is. It works beautifully. And you pointed something out to me when we were talking a couple days ago about how when you get attached to the outcome, you can't talk to him and the and you're even the thing you're yearning for the most is contact with him mm -hmm. gets destroyed because your jealousy or your hurt or whatever fear of losing him fear of makes losing him shut up. It's like, I can't communicate anymore. You can't anymore. text him when you want to. You can't, mm -hmm. you have no naturalness. Mm -hmm. And as soon as your loving comes back in, as soon as you're sourced from loving again, instead of fear, mm -hmm. it's, you know exactly what to do. And you just text him and he's like, oh, he's right there. And he wants to talk to you. And so you had three hour morning of meditating together. So, you know, let's pay attention to this. She's getting what she wants. Almost all of it. Just not getting She's just not getting laid by Damn this it. guy, <laughs> and she loves him, and that would be nice, but not if they can't stay out of the addiction. It's almost like, mm -hmm. you know- It is an addiction. You you two do an addictive pattern together, and when you can- Can so, we break it? Can you That's break it thing. and be a more balanced, where you can have a life relationship, or should you just stay maybe in two different countries? Right. <laughs> and so then, I guess time will tell on time that, will tell. but the- I, feel like my learning is I don't have to cut him off. I don't have to stop loving him or stop having a relationship with him, even if we're not going to be romantic partnerships. Now, I'm saying that out loud, and I know the reality of that will be a journey to go through, because if he does say, I'm calling it, right, then I I will go through another layer of having to let go. But I noticed last night when I came to the place in my mind where I was like, okay, if I – it was like the first time I was able to imagine us just as friends without mm, that. Good for and you. And it, it didn't fully set in, but I was like, okay, that that could be the absolute best thing for me. Could be. To have his friendship still in my life, to have all of the great – support we give each other, um, the laughter, the ways he inspires me. Like, why am I shutting that out? Because he doesn't- he's not giving you what you want. He's not giving me what I want. And just because he's not giving me what I want, do I have to make him wrong in that? And are and do you right? I, and, well, and do I have to make myself wrong? Because there's a part of me that goes, if he won't give me that part, then why am I investing all that time? Yeah. Why am I investing that time into a friendship? Right? <laughs> Thanks, so I would, Krista. I know. So I would, if it was my girlfriend, I would invest the time in it. But for some reason, when it's for me, the male-female thing, I'm only willing to invest the time in it if it's going to have the romantic outcome. Right. I hear you. You know, I think I think um, this is just a fabulous conversation. I hope you all are, are enjoying it because the inspiration to be loving even when you're not getting what you want from someone is really interesting. And I think it it sort of – washes over into our relationships with our parents or relationships with children. And so you can let all those throw, flow through your minds right now while you're listening to this. And for me, in the case of Mr. L, <laughs> again, almost came out, is that I actually want to have a relationship that is where I live. Mm. And I want to be in daily contact with my partner. You've grown so much I from that long-distance <laughs> loving episode that we did over the summer. With Mr. Know? L. When I was very happy to yeah. have him be very, very long way away. So having really recognized that, I've brought someone in my life who's happy to be in my life every day, mm -hmm. who wants to see me and wants to express with me and connect with me and all those things. And the beauty was I didn't actually have to give Mr. L up. I only had to give up the possibility of a future romantic relationship, which wasn't even the one I wanted because the mm -hmm. one I want is here. Right here. So I just had, when he wow. sent me his note back. Mr. L. Mr. L mm -hmm. sent me his note back after I said, it's time I need to invest in something that's here. He was so lovely. And his acknowledgement of the loving 
that would continue was the mm. very same thing that I love about him is that I yeah. know he has that kind of depth that he'll choose that. And I know that the person who's right here right now, who doesn't yet have a name, <laughs> I'm still working on it, is exactly perfect, mm -hmm. es especially for right now. That's all I know. Yeah. And eventually, I'm not saying there's no reason to make a commitment to someone. I'm not saying we wouldn't ever want to say, you're my person, whether that looks like marriage or just long-term relationship, doesn't matter. But in that choosing will be another phase. Right now, we're just choosing day. Today, right. would you like to see me? Today, would you like? So we're, we're on our like 10th date in 10 days. So we're doing pretty well. Wow. And um, we actually, we were at like seven dates in three days because we were <laughs> counting the times we saw each other twice or three times in the same day. Um, it's just been fun and it's been real. And I still have Mr. L's love underneath it. Right which is just sweet. That's really and nice. not giving it up is the best thing because I don't have that ache. Here's the other thing I just realized. If I had to give up something for Mr. New. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did he just get named He got Mr. named New? for the moment, Mr. <laughs> New. It won't last too long. <gasps> then part of me would feel like I had to lose something mm, to step into him. Yeah. But really, he's actually more of an embodiment of a full experience because I can still have that. And he wants to still have all the people that have ever been in his life. He's not right. willing to say- Because it works both ways. Oh, and he does. He's yeah. plenty. And, you know, <laughs> and, and he's okay, looked- The look on your face when you said that he's plenty. He has just, plenty. Is there some concern there? <laughs> no, no. Just that it's- the, yeah, actually, there is concern there. I don't know about any of the women out in our podcast land, but when you see your man love somebody really with his whole heart, even though he's choosing you for a relationship, it's tricky. Uh, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky. And so what's great about that is that I have the same thing going on. I can mm -hmm. choose to love Mr. L in full wholeheartedly and – choose to have a romantic relationship and one that's supporting me day to day yeah. with Mr. New. And he can have the same thing. And it mm. it's sweet. It just makes the room full of love. Well, right? and it helps that Mr. L isn't in the town. <laughs> like, because I, I think of like my situation, it's like, okay, that love can still be there. But if it's like in my, like if I'm in a new relationship or Golden Eyes is in a new relationship and I have to see it all the time, that's just another level of can I love you with you know, can I love you without owning you or having you in that way? And, you know, the, I know we both loved this th sentence that um, Gold and I said to me is like, when, when we're just friends, everything I do is great. You love me. Doesn't, I don't have to do anything for you. You're happy. We get along great. The minute we move into boyfriend and girlfriend territory, it's over. It's like, expectation. I'm constantly disappointing you. I'm not showing up in the ways you want. And that really opened my eyes to, to not only seeing that I was having that expectation, but he was doing it as well. It's like the minute he stepped up and said he was my boyfriend, it's almost like he thought I needed to do certain things for him. Absolutely. That's why it was like that that weird addiction conversation kept coming up because both of you from both sides would, had a zillion expectations of how you were going to fill each other up mm -hmm. to be big enough to be in this relationship that you were screaming to get out of because it wasn't giving you what you wanted. And mm -hmm. I just – I'm just super excited for both of us that we have more love – as we let go, and as we commit, and as we move in every direction, like <laughs> I'm so not the weird. big committer. Like, it's come so on, weird. let's remember. You know, I would swim a long way to get away. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, and so for someone with a commitment phobe to pick someone within um, our small little town. Oh my god, amazing! What's hilarious is I like very, very right off the bat when I maybe our first date or maybe our second date, I said something to him like, you know, I'm not so sure I like having you in my town. <laughs> and he's like, well, it's not like I'm going to move into your house or something. And I was like, yeah, it feels like it though. <laughs> Inside me. Yeah. Like, 
oh my God, I might bump into him at the grocery store. Like, ah, I don't want to do that. that was originally why you were choosing long distance relationships to keep yourself safe. And so that's what I was referencing a few minutes ago when I said you've grown so much from that because you've let go for the time being of the idea that the distance is going to keep you safe because in reality – you really never felt safe with Mr. L. No, it was a long it distance was, for a long time. Yeah. And, and it so was there, great. It was great, but it, there wasn't a sense of safety. No, and I had to do it for so long till I was done, yeah, right? For and sure. that was, you know, and, and again, it's that thing about the brilliance of what people in our lives bring us that are we really attuned to everything is for us, everything that people are bringing us, Mm -hmm. are exactly what we need to grow into more loving. That is the only purpose for us on this planet, which is why we ask you every time we say goodbye to just do one little special thing for us, right? Mm -hmm. So we're on that note. We're going to say goodbye, and we're going to let go of our individual relationships with each one of you. (laughs) (laughs) And we're going to tell you how much we love you and appreciate, deeply appreciate your support and your love by being with us on this incredible adventure called holy fuck (laughs) (laughs) we love you let love love live it doesn't have to shut off even though forms are changing in relationships let it live and spread the love you guys all right we love you bye do you want the opportunity to see the gals of holy fuck in person if so go to holyfuckpodcast.com and join our mailing list so you can find out when and where these goddesses will be transforming lives next. And yes, I know, I'm talking about myself in third person. Open your browser, type in holyfuckpodcast.com, click on mailing list, and give us your most trusty email. Not that bogus one you give to Walmart. So sign up now. Not tomorrow. Now. Now, now, now. Thank you.